as a BC only topic, you can expect to see integration by parts appear in some capacity in one of your free response questions. It could totally happen. Remember that three of your free response questions contain BC only topics. So here's an example. Let's take a look. Let f be the function defined for x greater than zero with f of e equaling two, f prime, the first derivative of f given by f prime of x is equal to x squared times the natural log x. Part A, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at the point e comma two. All right, super easy. This is gonna be the easiest thing that we've done all day. To find the equation of a tangent line, you need two pieces of information, one of which is already given to you. That's the point. You also need the slope, and we're gonna find the slope by just taking that point plugging it into the derivative. Easy. Part B, is the graph of f concave up or concave down on the interval from 1 to 3? Give a reason for your answer. Concavity we test by looking at the second derivative. So here's our first. We'll just have to take one more derivative and then test out in this interval, see if it's positive or negative. Use anti-differentiation to find f of x. So here, finally, is the part of this whole entire free response question that has to do with integration by parts. Why is that? Well, we need to take the antiderivative of this, and we have the antiderivative of a product, and that product is polynomial function multiplied times transcendental, which is a really good candidate for integration by parts. Now, one more thing. When it says to find um, f of x, we know that when we find the antiderivative, we would have a plus c. We can resolve the C, we can find the C because they gave us our initial condition and you wanna make sure that you do that. All right, let's get started here. On the first and easiest part of all this, we wanna find a tangent line. We need two things, a point, which is given to us as E comma two, and we need a slope, which is gonna be given to us by plugging our point into the derivative. We only need an X coordinate and our X coordinate is E. So it's f prime of e is equal to e squared times the natural log of e. The natural log of e is just 1, so we have e squared as our slope. All right, put both of those pieces of information together in point-slope form. We have y minus y1, that's our 2 right here, is equal to our slope e squared that we just found times x minus x1 which is this x-coordinate there, and then leave it alone. There's no reason for you to distribute your, uh, your e squared there. You don't have to solve it for y. No, nah, that's good. It's good to go. All right, let's go on to part b. Is the graph concave up or concave down on that interval? So we need to look at the second derivative. Part b. First derivative was x squared natural log x. Looks like we're going to have to use product rule because we've got a product of two functions. Finding the second derivative gives us derivative of the first piece is a 2x times natural log. That looks like a limit. Close enough. All right. Plus the first one, x squared times the derivative of the second one, 1 over x, which is nice because like one of these things is going to cancel out one of these factors of x. So our second derivative then should be equal to 2x natural log x plus x all by itself. So now we want to find the super critical numbers where our second derivative is equal to 0. And it looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of factoring here. So they both have a common factor of x. So we'll pull it out. 2 natural log x and then plus 1. Okay, using the zero product property, we got x is equal to zero as a supercritical, except in this case, we're going to cancel it out because it's outside of our interval, right? And it also said for x is greater than zero. So that one's gone. Let's do the same thing for the second one. We've got two natural log x plus one is equal to zero. So let's solve that one for x. Subtract the one over. Divide by 2. Okay, a couple ways to think of this. First of all, can natural log be negative? Well, you can't stick a negative number into natural log, but you can get a negative number as an answer to a natural log. Just take a look at the natural log graph that we have right here. 
it's negative to the left of 1. Remember that it hits the x-axis right there at 1, and so negative a half would be someplace like right around in here. And so you can see that it's a, uh, it's a number that is less than 1. The x value is going to be less than 1 someplace, which again is outside of our interval, so we would exclude it. All right. Um, another thing that you could do is you can exponentiate this thing, and you have... Uh, x is equal to e to the negative one-half power, or if you prefer, uh, x is equal to 1 over mm, the square root of e. All right. Now, of course, you have no access to a calculator, and you may not recognize that number as being something that's smaller than 1, which is why the looking at it graphically was probably the superior way to think about this. So this is also outside of our interval, meaning we don't have any critical, supercritical numbers inside of this interval. What does that mean? It means that it only has one type of concavity. There's no point of inflection. There's no change in concavity. It's either going to be concave up or concave down, depending on whether this thing is positive or negative. How do I tell? I just do a test value. Let's pick the number 2, x is equal to 2, to plug it into our second derivative to see if it's positive or negative. f double prime of 2 is equal to, we have 2 times 2 times the natural log of 2, lots of 2s, plus another 2. Whew. Again, we only care is this positive or negative. Let's simplify it a little bit more if it's not obvious yet. We got 4 times the natural log of 2 plus another 2. So here's the part that we got to think about a little bit, the natural log of 2. So back here on the graph, clean this up just a little bit. Remember that this is the number 1, and anything x value greater than 1 is going to be positive when we take the natural log of it. Ours is the natural log of 2, which is also a positive number. So all of this is greater than 0. If it's greater than 0, then that means it is concave up. It's a cup. Oh, let's write that cup. Yeah, there you go. So now the only thing that's left is to give a reason for your answer. Remember, you don't have to justify unless it tells you to do so, and that definitely did. So why do we know that it's concave up? We know that because in the interval, our second derivative is positive. Since f double prime of x is greater than zero for all x in one to three, f of x must be concave up on that interval. And that is more than adequate. It's perfect, as a matter of fact. All right, so that brings us to part C. Use anti-differentiation to find f of x, which finally is the part that this lesson is all about. It's the integration by parts. Okay, so we have um, f prime, again, of x is equal to x squared natural log x. So I'm going to take you to the, through the process. This is a differential equation that we're trying to solve. We have our initial condition of e comma 2. And usually what we do is a separation of variables to solve this thing. So it's easier to see whenever it's in differential form like this. And then you separate your variables. You're going to get the dx from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And now you integrate both sides. Well, that's a weird color. Whatever. On the left-hand side, antiderivative of just dy is y, or f of x if you prefer, is equal to, and then here's where we have our integration by parts happening. Right. So whenever you're looking at this, you're doing this on your own, with no teacher to prompt you, you're having to think through all of the techniques that you've learned. So let's try to eliminate why it's not a U substitution, right? Because that's that should be your first thought. U substitution, a little bit less complicated than U, uh, the integration by parts. Uh, so if we can do it by U substitution, that would be faster and easier. 
The reason why that this one is not u substitution though, is let's say that I chose x squared to be our u. Then du is equal to 2x, which we don't have in here. We can't fix that. If u is equal to natural log of x, then du is equal to 1 over x. In other words, an x in the denominator, which also we do not have, right? So we don't have the pieces. But we do have a, an algebraic function multiplied times a transcendental function. And according to Lippitt, this is a pretty good candidate then for integration by parts. So speaking of Lippitt, we have x squared, which is our power function. We have natural log of x, which is our logarithmic function, meaning that the natural log of x should be equal to our u. u is equal to the natural log of x. du should be equal to 1 over x dx. The other part, the polynomial part, dv, is equal to x squared dx. Take its antiderivative. Remember, you got to add 1 to the exponent, so x to the third over 3. All right, now we're ready to assemble stuff. And, you know, maybe I just switch this back to f of x because it did ask me to find f of x. f of x is equal to uv. I'm going to write that as a 1 third x cubed. Um, times the natural log of x, uh, very good, minus the definite integral. I said definite integral. It's actually the indefinite integral of v du. So I have x cubed over 3 that we're going to multiply times 1 over x dx. And this one, very conveniently, a factor of x is going to cancel out for us. Okay, and let's just rewrite stuff to make it look pretty. And hopefully you don't run out of paper. <laughs> Whoops. No, 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 that's not right. Now it is. Minus, and then we have x cubed over 3. x squared over 3. Come on. And if you wanted to, you can bring that third, that one third that's here. You can bring that out if you wanted to. So there's no funny business here. This is just a straight application of the power rule to find the antiderivative of that second one. Remember, that's the goal of integration by parts is to exchange your complicated integrand for something that is super simple, which we did. Mission accomplished. Okay, so taking the antiderivative, add 1 to the exponent. That's x cubed over 3, over 3, which makes it over 9. And then don't forget your plus C. On these kind of questions where you're solving a differential equation, if you forget a plus C, then you're done. You don't qualify for any of the points that come after it. Luckily, there's only probably this one and using the initial condition to find your final answer. So maybe there's only like one or two points left. But still, come on, we can get these points. Put your plus C. And now let's use our initial condition of E comma 2 right here. Plug in our E f of e should be equal to one-third e cubed natural log of e minus e cubed over 9 plus c. All of this is supposed to be equal to a, a, a 2. Is that correct? Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now let's go ahead and simplify here. The natural log of e is just 1, so ignore it. And we essentially have 1 third e cubed minus 1 ninth e cubed. Uh, well, well, that looks like it's on the bottom, but it's not. Plus c is equal to 2, so I have to combine these. I need a common denominator of a 9, so I'm going to make this a 3 ninths. Subtract them, I'm going to get 2 ninths e cubed plus c is <laughs> equal to c. Brilliant. It's equal to 2, and then subtract that guy over to get c is equal to 2 minus 2 ninths e cubed, which, you know, you probably could have guessed. You know, it's, it's a fairly obvious. So finally, write your answer as f of x is equal to 1 third e to the x natural log of x minus... 1 ninth x cubed. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not correct. 
what what is this? This should have been an x cubed. I only had an e to the third because I plugged in e for my x coordinate. Well, that would have been a mistake that I could not recover from. And then add in your c, which is our 2 minus 2 ninths e cubed. And we're done. All right, so that brings us to the conclusion of our lesson here on integration by parts, anti-differentiation technique, where we are exchanging the integral of u dv for something simpler. It's uv minus the integral of v du, and hopefully this second integral is simpler than the one that we started with. And the way that we choose what part is what is using this acronym LIPIT. The closer that we are to the L, we want to use the U, logarithmic, inverse trigonometric, and etc. Closer that we are to the right-hand side, we're going to choose that as dv. That could be our power function, exponential, or trigonometric.